we have uh, talked about in the past how we don't have enough metals for the clean energy transition. Mm. It seems so far that economists are saying we might see surplus in, in copper production in the next few years. How does that compare with what we're seeing in a potential economic downturn globally as well? They're dreaming. We've had decades of underinvestment in, in mining and in, in basic raw materials. And so you can create a recession, you can raise rates, you can suppress economic activity, but the minute uh, our Chinese friends come out of uh, their lockdown, the minute the world goes back to normal economic activity, we're going to have a sustained long-term shortage of critical metals for the new economy. But what about the fact that we are seeing still the energy crisis ongoing with the invasion of Ukraine? Has that pushed sort of the timeline for this transition to green technologies? What we're really seeing is the evolution of a just-in-case economy from a just-in-time economy. We're seeing the balkanization of supply chains, and we're seeing how everything is interlinked. Price of food rises as a, as a result of the Ukrainian war, and international shortage is appearing in a lot of commodities. Nickel and copper, for example, right now are at the lowest inventories we've seen in decades. Where are we at when it comes to the super cycle then and the investment in the cycle? We don't know about super cycle, but we know that if you're dreaming you, you about... You don't think that this is well, another super cycle? If you want to stop burning hydrocarbon and you want to stop burning coal and you want to maintain 3% global GDP growth, then we have an enormous amount of work to do to provide the basic raw materials to enable that transition. If you want to continue to burn coal, and you want to continue to burn oil, we still have a major challenge just to maintain 3% GDP growth for a lot of critical raw materials. Does a move away from COVID-0 significantly change the outlook for demand? Massively. Mm. China consumes about half of the world's copper. So when everybody's on lockdown in China, they're not out on the street consuming. As you saw in the United States, when people came out of lockdown, there was an explosion in consumption. And that's likely to happen as the Chinese people relax their grip due to COVID. And we're seeing more focus on these critical metals as well, given, of course, the, the decoupling of the U.S.-China uh, and, and ties being worse. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the recent uh, summit between Presidents Biden and Xi? Is, are we headed towards a, a closer uh, or improved relations between the two at least? I'm very happy for our children and our grandchildren that President Xi clearly agreed with the President of the United States that we shouldn't use nuclear weapons. And hopefully that will temper the behavior of the third major participant, the Russians. Mm. Oh. But at least when it comes to the investments in some of these uh, technologies and some of the mining these metals that are critical mm. for uh, national security, mm. that will continue. Absolutely. We're seeing the balkanization of the world economy. The Chinese want to secure their entire supply chain, top to bottom, womb to tomb. The Americans also, Canadians. And so we're seeing a lot more concern about national security for these metals as opposed just to the greening of the world economy. So the one thing that Democrats and Republicans agree on is we need more copper metal. The Democrats, for the greening of the world economy, and the Republicans for national security. Are moves to secure critical metals at this point too late? It takes 20 or 30 years to secure critical metals. Mining is unfortunately a business not for intelligent people. It takes decades. So China has been forward-looking on this matter for 20 or 30 years, and the Western world is just catching up to the requirement for critical raw materials. You can see in Germany right now, they're burning coal to get through the winter. That never should have happened. When you talk about the greening of the economy, mining is not necessarily a, a, a green industry, is it? So uh, what are some of the technologies that you're hopeful for and optimistic about in order to get there when it comes to the industry itself? Mining has to be transformed, but here in the studio, everything you touch was the product of mining. The table and chairs we're sitting on all those cameras out there. So like any other human activity, it can be done better or worse. The mining industry is making rapid strides at reinventing itself. And we have the 
advantage of the sum total of technological development. Everything, broadband, internet, wireless, supercomputers, machine learning, artificial intelligence, it's all gonna help us to find a better way to mine and what we mine. Is there more funding now that there is a greater understanding that this is needed? Major mining companies have huge cash flow from iron ore and they're now looking at reinvesting that iron ore in disruptive new technologies to reduce the energy consumption and the environmental footprint of mining. Given the dislocations we've seen in energy markets this year, have you changed the way that you split your, your energy and your focus when it comes to tech ventures versus traditional ventures? We're more and more involved in disruptive technology. We're developing new ways to crush and grind rock. About five to eight percent of total global warming gas is generated by the energy required to crush and grind rock. It's that silly, but that basic. In order to get metals out of rock, you've got to grind it down to talcum powder, and that uses a huge amount of energy. So there is new technology to do this. And if you come back from Mars in 20 or 30 years to this little planet, there'll be huge changes in the mining industry, far more energy efficient, much less disruptive, more likely to be underground, by the way, than on the surface. Since the first New Economy Forum, it feels like the global economy has been hit by compounding crises after crisis after crisis, and a lot of them have been black swan events, right, like the war in Ukraine. Going into 2023, what are we not seeing? What are we deeply underprepared for? The Western world is uh, desirous of a complete energy transition. Most people can't even define what the word energy means, let alone transition. Transition to what? So if these lights and these cameras are going to be powered by sustainable energy, the electric cars, you don't need the car for, just for the electric car, but the whole grid and the way we generate and transmit electrical energy has to be massively transformed. If everybody in America plugs in an electric car at 5 p.m., the grid would just die. So there's a massive underestimated investment required in the critical raw materials to enable that transition.